the number one rule of note taking is that the system has to serve you and not the other way around. And so after months and months of using the Zettelkasten method or smart notes to organize the notes that I've been taking and research for a book that I'm working on, I decided to try a different approach. I stumbled upon uh, an article written by Ryan Holiday, and it's how I wrote a book with extensive uh, photo coverage that he documented his journey of writing the book, The Perennial Seller. And I actually we just finished reading that book because it was such a great insight into the creative process and I took a lot away from that. So I decided to give it a shot and see if it would help me better organize all the notes that I've amassed over the last year in writing this particular book, this project. One of the constraints that I kept running into with the smart notes is for whatever reason my mind just had a capacity or a threshold for like the number of notes and um, not being able to compartmentalize my project versus just my general knowledge management of various notes, like a, notes on the writing process, notes on life, notes on different programming languages that I'm learning versus this particular project. When they would blend together, uh, for whatever reason, my brain would just start to seize up and it, would, it made the project very difficult to get my head around. So I've decided to take a different approach and I've created, I've moved all my project notes for that particular writing effort into a different vault. And instead of using the knowledge management system, the Zettelkasten method for organizing the knowledge, I'm using Ryan Holiday and Robert Greene's uh, note-taking method where th I basically have transported that physical version the best of my ability that I could see through what Ryan documented on his websites, uh, on his website to Obsidian. And that's what I'm going to walk through here today. So before I dive into that, though, I just want to kind of reiterate a little bit or narrate the process of how both of those amazing authors uh, do their research and their writing uh, roughly in a couple different stages where they kind of have a structure for their outline. Uh, so they, they know the general structure of the book that they want through reading and just kind of uh, mulling over ideas. Once they have that structure or that kind of the, the parts of the book defined, that's when the research begins. And how they go about that research is uh, they read books very carefully. They mark them up, uh, very much aligned with the Zettelkast and how you would take fleeting and literature and uh, permanent notes. They kind of combine a lot of those into one note-taking system. Uh, and so they read the book very carefully. They mark it up. They make notes in the margins, and then they let it sit. So they use time to help filter out the best ideas of whatever it is that they've read. I've found that to be tremendously helpful, and I've started to do the same, where I'll read a book, I'll mark it up, I'll take notes uh, in various forms. It could be an index of ideas where I'm, you know, if it's not my book, uh, I will take an index card and I will write down the ideas and the page number. But if it's my book and then I own it, I do all sorts of things to it. I underline it, I put bars uh, to highlight passages, I write in the margins and stuff like that. Uh, so that way I know when I go back to it in a week or so uh, what I thought was interesting and then I can reevaluate re whether it was or not. Um, and then once that time has passed, they kind of sit down and they batch the note taking. So they sit down on a session. Uh, for me, that spans multiple days. So I'll, you know, per, uh, perennial seller, I will start taking notes on that next week. It'll be about a week since I've finished reading it. I'll pull it up and then I'll spend my morning one or two hours each morning until it's done. Uh, usually it takes me a couple days, just two days. And then I'll have, you know, at most uh, good books yield 20 to 30 notes I've found on average. And, you know, the less notes, the less relevant was. Doesn't mean it wasn't worth reading, but uh, definitely from a note taking perspective, it was a less quality book if it doesn't get past like the 10 mark. Uh, but your hand won't be as tired. So that's kind of the process to get the notes in here. And so the reason why they both start with the structure is so that they have a bucket to put those notes in. So you can see that I have revised uh, the buckets that I have for this particular project into three parts. Um, part one, part two, and part three. And what happens when I take those notes, um, I usually put them in, I put them in the root directory. So if I were to take a new note, it would just go here and then another new note and it would, it would queue up in the root of the directory. And that is just a place where I would queue them up. So in the physical version, you would have a stack of index cards that you need to sort into a box. This is the digital representation for me in the root directory. So I'll go ahead and clean uh, those up and we'll walk through the rest of the vault. So like I said, there are the three parts and typically what will happen is you don't know where these need to go and you don't even really have an idea for what the, the themes are quite yet in the book or what you're going to write about. Um, and this particular vault is it's again scoped to a large body of work like a book or a long, long form essay. So you move the notes into 
uh, the different areas. So let's just take this back out to the root directory and say, I just took this note on digital, uh, social media has become a digital fast food. That definitely seems like it would go in part one, the side effects of usage. So I put it in that bucket. And then what I have found um, to happen is once you've amassed, you know, like 10 or 20 notes, or whatever, you can kind of skim them and uh, establish a theme. So the themes and sections will emerge naturally as you do your research. And I've found that to be, uh, that's a claim that Ryan Holiday makes, and I found that to be absolutely true. So after reading The Shallows and taking 30 notes, The Shallows by Nicholas Carr, um, I had a lot of notes around neuroplasticity and around how the internet is different from most mediums. And so kind of the, the theme that came to my head there was the shallowing of the mind. And then I just started to drag those notes from the part folder into the the theme. So this this could become a chapter or it could become a section. I don't know yet. Um, but that's all the notes relating to that particular thing are grouped there. I did try to do this in a note structure where the graph would kind of with linking and stuff like that. But for whatever reason, the file explorer just really helps bucket them in my mind a lot better. And I can easily just expand and collapse that idea. Uh, and I believe this is going to help me when I go to write where I can expand this folder, create a workspace from those notes and use those as my outline to then write. Uh, it's a much better way for me to kind of bucket the different uh, groups of knowledge. So, that's kind of the, the process there is like you let the themes uh, emerge from it. So you you have your structure, you put the notes into that structure broadly. Um, and you can see here, I have the idea for chapter or part two, but I really don't have any themes yet identified or um, sections and such um, for that particular part. But as I do more research and as I put more in there, it's going to evolve and come up with that. Now, I did just finish uh, A World Without Email by Cal Newport. And that yielded a lot of uh, a lot of great ideas for the third part of the book that I have, which is kind of work in the depths is the the working title for that. Um, but you can see that I've got uh, a life of less convenience, which is kind of like a theme around digital minimalism and that kind of thing from various um, different aspects. Uh, my experience with the light phone is in there. Um, Escape your inbox is really kind of, if I were to give a summary of that book, of A World Without Email, it would be kind of a, a how-to guide of how to escape your inbox. Um, and so this has led to not only um, a theme, but themes under the theme. So in the notes, um, I kind of put them all in this escape your inbox folder, and I noticed that some were a lot about task boards, a lot were about improving meetings and a, a big bulk of them were about just communication overload in general and why that's a problem and how it happened. A lot of those notes came from Cal's book. So that is the structure. And let's just take a look at um, what a particular note looks like. My, what my notes look like have evolved. So the first thing that you'll notice, I'll make it a little bit bigger just so you can see it in entirely, its entirety, um, is that I have a name note. Let's open up a shallows note. So first, let's start at the reference. So whenever I consume a book um, and I'm going to take notes on it, I've started to take the, the reference itself instead of just the title. So I have a card in my reference system. If we go here for each book that I've or article that I've read. So the shallows is one. That's just the short name for it uh, without the subtitle. Uh, and then what I have are some metadata. So I have source and book, so I can keep track of how many books that I've used for this particular body of work. Uh, and in there, I'm starting to record the biblio, biblio, bibliographical data, there we go, um, of the book. So there's the author's name, uh, the title, and editions, which is an app applicable for this, the publisher, publish date, and then the ISBN number. Um, all the things that you would need to cite a source. And then if I go and I open up one of their notes, I can see that I have, I, I took 33 or a linked 33 notes. And so in here I can see all of the different notes that I had taken from the shallows. Uh, and then here's kind of the standard format. Some of the notes that I poured over don't have this format, but this is my new format going forward. So it starts with the source, uh, and then I link to that reference note, and then I just note the page number in the note. So if I found this and I wanted to go revisit it, I could pull up, I could grab shallows off my bookshelf behind me, and then I could read the note. Uh, and then here's the, the particular note. It's more of a summary note. Um, so there's three different types of notes that I've 
that I've established and I've created templates for. Um, one is a, a summary, one is a paraphrase, and then one is a quote. Uh, and if I were to do a quote, um, there's a nice little plugin. Um, add quotes. So, and this creates a nice little box for the quote. Uh, and that plugin is, it's a community plugin. There we go. Admonition, I believe is how you pronounce it, but that is a great uh, little community plugin. It allows you to do uh, many things. So if you look at the actual help file, there's notes, information, different little call outs that you can do for the notes that just make it prettier. And that's one benefit of the digital version is you have those neat little plugins. You don't have to rely on the limitations of your own handwriting. So that's what the notes look like um, and the references and the folder structure. Now, the other thing that um, I've, I couldn't help myself but apply software engineering practices to my research is I created a Kanban board um, or a task board for my research. So, uh, you know, with the aging, I wanted to be able to put books on some kind of a backlog or a waiting list so that way I could process them. So what I've decided to do is put all the different things that I want to read and consume into a Kanban board. And I have uh, a few columns for that. If we zoom out just a hair, we can see them. So I have a backlog, which is um, and organized by the importance that I see fit for that backlog. So it's groomed and prioritized of what I want to read. Then I have a ready column. So these are the things that I will be grabbing top from bottom into the doing column. Uh, and so right now I'm on a little pause for the research and I'm doing some meta learning on the craft of research. Uh, that's a book that I'm reading to learn how to research better and how to form arguments and stuff. So throughout this process of learning how to write a book, I've taken little hiatuses, usually a couple of weeks or a month, and I've done some meta learning on whatever it is that I'm stuck on. Um, note taking was a big part of that, where I took several months to kind of understand how to better take notes and to under to capture my thinking so that way I wasn't so overwhelmed and feeling su such anxiety from trying to keep so much in my head. Uh, and then I have a waiting. So you can see here, I have escaped your inbox as a chapter waiting to be written. Uh, and then I also have the perennial seller, which I need to, so if I up here, I have a task list. We'll add take notes to this. And I'll fix that. Ooh. So there's the take notes. And if I wanted to add a date to this, I can select. And we'll just say we'll start doing it tomorrow. So now I have a little date that I want to pick up that book and take notes. I've already read it, so I can check that box. And then I need to take notes. And then I can move it to uh, the done column. So I move it over here when it's done. Uh, but this is definitely helping me get an idea. One, to realize that I have a lot to do. Uh, two, it's giving me some visual representation of my progress as I go across and I read and I learn. Um, so with that, that is how I have translated Ryan Holiday and Robert Greene's note-taking system into Obsidian. Uh, it's really helping me with the fol folder explorer, file explorer, helping me bucket and contain the knowledge a little bit better for this particular project um, than the smart notes methodology where you build kind of a, a bottom up hierarchy of knowledge. Um, it's allowing me to, in a single vault, kind of bring myself back into a project. And then when I close a vault, be able to set it down for a little bit because I have other responsibilities and duties to do um, first write this uh, book or work on this the entire time. So with that, I think uh, thank you for watching and please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'd love to hear uh, wh what your thoughts are. So thank you again for watching.